Today's Mass gives us some very dark readings to reflect on. And at the end of the Gospel today, the end of these two dark readings, it seems like Jesus is just kind of fed up with us. Why does this generation seek a sign? No sign will be given to it. He gets in the boat and he goes to the other shore. If we took these scriptures out of the rest of the Bible, out of the rest of our history of faith, we might have a very dark picture of God. But the fact is, these scriptures are in the midst of the whole story of salvation, the whole story of how God works with us. And this gospel passage is in the heart of the whole of the story of Jesus, his ministry, to bring the love of the Father and to proclaim it to us in our world where we are. Venerable Bruno Lanteri, the founder of my congregation that I belong to, the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, he reminds us that it's important for us not to think of God and measure God by our measure, but to think of God and measure God by the way he truly is. And we might be tempted hearing these scriptures to measure God by our measure. We see Cain, his resentment toward God, his jealousy of his brother Abel, and then the fruits of that in his actions. We see the Pharisees coming, asking for a sign from Jesus in order to test him. And we see the response that Jesus gives. He is frustrated. He sighs from the depths of his spirit. And he goes away from them that day. If we take the measure of our hearts and project it onto God, we'll say, well, God's plans are frustrated and our sin is too much for God. But let's put these stories back in the whole context. In that first reading, even after Cain commits this horrible act, his envy, his jealousy leads to murder of his own brother. God counsels Cain. Actually, even before that, God counsels Cain. He speaks to him, why are you resentful toward me? If you act well, you can hold your head high. But you're engaged in this battle. Temptation is at the door. It's knocking at your heart and wants to get in. God is trying to appeal to Cain's heart. God speaks to Cain. Even at the end of the story, Cain complains that his punishment is too much, and God says, I will still protect you. You have done what you've done. You carry the burden of that, but you're not away from my hand. I still have care for you, even after all that has happened. It's the same thing that happened earlier in the story of Genesis, after the sin of Adam and Eve. They tried to cover their sin with, with fig leaves, and it says, God made for them clothes out of leather. He said, you'll have to suffer the effect, the consequence of your sins, but I'm going to give you even better help than you can give to yourselves. And I'm going to give you the promise of my salvation. I've given you all of creation. I've given you all of these good things in it, and they are yours. Even when you misuse them, God says, they are still yours, and my desire for you, my plan for you, is still at work. If you give your heart back to me, you will be saved. If you open your heart back to me, all of the good that I have put in creation and put at your disposal will have its fruit in you. But if you keep your heart closed to me, none of these good things can have their fruit. I think that's what we see with Jesus in the gospel today. By this point in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus had, has fed 5,000, he's fed 4,000, he's cast out demons, he has raised the dead, he has healed the sick, and the crowds have brought all of the sick to him just to touch the tassel of his cloak and be healed. After all of that, the Pharisees come to him today and say, Lord, give us a sign. Jesus sighs. There is a weariness in his heart. He says, I have given you all of these signs, but even more so, I am the sign to you. 
what more can I do to get in to your heart? God is continually appealing to our hearts. Jesus knows that he can't do something more to make the Pharisees believe. Only they can open up the door of their hearts. You know that picture of Jesus knocking at the door? It's a picture of Jesus standing and knocking at a door and there's no handle on the outside. It's a beautiful picture. Maybe that's a better image of what these scriptures tell us today. The door to your heart, the door to my heart, is in my hand, not in God's hand. In the first reading and in the gospel, God is continually approaching us, speaking to us, appealing to us, knocking on the door of our hearts. But it's up to you and to me to turn the handle from inside and allow God in. If we measure God by our measure, say, you know what? God must be frustrated with me. God must be done with me. All hope is lost. Thanks be to God. God is not us. God is God. God never gives up. God never ceases to knock on the door of our hearts. And that means in every moment, at every day, and in every circumstance, you and I have the opportunity just to open the door of our heart. God is there always appealing to us. All the good that God has created is at our disposal. And if only we open our hearts to him, all of that good can begin to have its effect in us. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our nation on this President's Day. Let's pray for our civil leaders. Let's pray for the leaders of all nations that we might know God's goodness, persistence and patience knocking on the door of our hearts and that each one of us in our own place, in our own state, might open that door to let God's word enter in and open the door of our hearts to one another. Let's not measure God by our frailty, but let's allow God to show us his goodness, his mercy, his infinite unfailing love in Jesus Christ the living sign, the living word, who gives himself to us completely in this Eucharist we now celebrate.